few years ago, we had a really bad heat dome in the city of Seattle. And I remember it very clearly because I had a three week old baby at that time. And uh, I don't have air conditioning in my house. So my family had to leave and we got a hotel room and um, it was really awful. And that experience for me was a sign that we are really not ready for climate change as a city and as a region, as a community. And so the next year, um, the unions that I work with came together with climate justice organizations and frontline communities. And um, we went to the city of Seattle, to the city council and to the mayor. And um, that year was a year where we were looking at the future of parks in our city. And we noticed that there are actually community centers in neighborhoods all over the city of Seattle. And we said, there needs to be a safe place for people to go. And um, because we all came together and advocated over the next few years, um, half of those community centers are gonna be turned into what we call climate resilience hubs. So they're gonna have solar panels and batteries. So if the power goes out, it's still gonna be on in those buildings. They're gonna have smoke filtration systems so that people of asthma have some place in their neighborhood, which is gonna have clean air. And they're gonna have heat pumps so that there's air conditioning um, in the next heat dome. And uh, that's the kind of change that we need to have on a very large scale throughout our city. You know, half the community centers is just a start, but um, that's the kind of vision that we're working for. I have always been very interested in justice. Um, and I think part of that has to do with my family story. My dad's family is Japanese American, and they were all interned during World War II after Pearl Harbor was bombed, even though they were all United States citizens. And um, uh, my mom's family were Holocaust survivors and refugees. So I think uh, that was a big part of the context. And I went to a really interesting high school. We had an honor code and a code of conduct. And we also had an elected judicial committee that I was on where if somebody was accused of violating those policies, then our committee, which was a mix of students and faculty, would have to decide what should happen. It was a really great opportunity to have dedicated time to really think about right and wrong and ethics and, um, and justice. I'm the organizing director at MLK Labor which is the Central Labor Council for Seattle and King County. And we're essentially an association of all of the labor unions in the Seattle area. And so um, our members' members do all kinds of work. They deliver babies and work in emergency departments. They build all the big buildings in downtown Seattle. They build airplanes. They operate the cranes in the port of Seattle. They're firefighters, EMTs, social workers, public defenders, they're all of the teachers and educators. That's what our union members do in our community. And I'm really proud to be able to work with them. A union is when workers come together with their coworkers and uh, as a group kind of decide what would they want to see improved at work. And then they um, make those concerns known as a group. So it's not just one person individually asking for a raise or better benefits or um, re remote work or um, better, better treatment for LGBTQ workers or trans workers or, you know, having their companies have better policies on climate change. And these are all examples of things that workers are, are wanting right now um, and have made improvements on through organizing. But everybody has to go. <laughs> the trick is having everybody do it together. Um, and when you have enough people, that's what gives you the power to actually, you know, get things done in the real world. Organizing work is a lot about listening to people and trying to understand what is important to them. And so before the pandemic, I used to go out and meet, meet people a lot in person. Um, you know, now a lot of it is Zoom. Um, but one of my favorite parts of my job is on days when we get to do big public action. Um, and so if there's a big protest or a rally or a strike when people all stop working together um, or 
like a lobby day where lots of workers go or community members go and they meet with the mayor or a city council member um, and explain what their concerns are and what kind of changes they would want to see made. Those, those days are really fun. But I want to speak directly to students who are still in high school or going to be <clears throat> doing Running Start or in the community college system or at the University of Washington. All school buildings need to need to be changed physically to be ready for climate change. They all need smoke filtration. They all need solar panels and backup power. They all need heat pumps for air conditioning. And uh, they don't, <clears throat> most of them don't currently have these things. There is incredibly important work that students could really play a critical difference in advocating for. And, and the difference between that work getting done next year or getting started next year versus, oh, we'll get to it 10 years from now is going to make, it's literally all the difference in the world. The most important thing with this climate transition is that we do it quickly. And so um, I want to communicate some some urgency and also that, um, you know, if a group of 20 students show up to a school board meeting and say, hey, like we, we need to see this stuff, these changes happen now, I think uh, school board members will actually take that concern pretty seriously. And wherever there are students um, making these concerns, bringing these concerns forward, there is a whole other group of union members, construction workers, climate activists, um, frontline communities who will who will show up to back you up. So um, let's let's do this together, and we can make these really important changes.